So let me welcome you to our Inglewood project. Come to doing my daily rounds. And uh, today, you kind of brighten my face up because I'm walking in and I'm checking out all the stain. Uh, we've got all this incredible wood, like right here. Killa, killa, killa. So this is like a deep, a deep planter style shelf. Um, you know, very mid-century. It really looks just strong. Um, the render carpenters. Uh, mitered all this, very, you know, a lot of time and intensity. Um, we picked out a bunch of amazing wood. And we had some limitations, like over here we have seam. But if you check it out, it looks like we have an eyeball that's continuous right here because we put that much thought and time and energy into uh, the placement of everything. Um, we were working on the cabinets right now. So we built these cabinets on site. And this is what's called a vertical grain riff sawn white oak. And this is it in front of you. These are all of our doors. And it's got a nice tight grain. The way it is milled um, from a tree is it's sectioned off in a way that actually uh, has more waste than any other sort of method that I know of, of logging, meaning that you're not really getting to utilize the, the full tree. But the benefit of it, and the reason that we opt, opted for it in this case, is this really tight graining. Like that's a beautiful thing to look at and it's definitely not like the only cool type of grain that you can have but it is very neat just to have something so linear out of something that's so organic as a tree. Now if you're just cutting a log regularly it's going to look like this. And I don't know if you call that like regularly sawn or, or whatnot but that's kind of the difference. So you get these wider open more organic flowy sort of grains and it looks super cool too, but when you're doing something like cabinets, right, where you want to have uh, everything very specific and maybe a, maybe a little bit more controlled, you just want like these tight, 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 tight lines, and that's, that's what you've got. And you, you only have so much control over them, you know, that some of them have little waves to them, some of them are a little lighter and darker and lighter and darker, and that sort of thing, and um, you know, but it, no, it's awesome. So like, look over here, check this one out, this side. Love that panel. So what I like about this panel is I like, I like this guy, I like that guy, I like that guy. And you know, although you, you might want a little bit of control with your wood, you don't want too much because it's freaking wood and you want to maintain the fact that it is coming from a live source and uh, it is natural. So that's the deal there. Inside these cabinets, uh, we've got some white maple is what you're looking at. And with that white maple, we have just chosen a clear coat. The clear coats we're using on this go around, I'm using this uh, Benjamin Moore Stays Clear. So this is a non-yellowing uh, clear coat and acrylic. And excuse me. And uh, here is the wood conditioner that we're hitting everything with first. And what that's going to do is kind of control uh, differentiation of colors as grains are receiving the stain differently. So you've got some areas that are more porous and more open, and they're just going to take the stain darker. And you've got other areas that are that are more out front, and uh, you know maybe the sander is hitting them a little bit more, and they're just a little less porous, so they're going to receive the stain differently, and it's going to be lighter. So uh, you know we didn't want it to be too crazy uh, in terms of differentiation. So this is a good example of what it's like to do the conditioner and the stain, and then the clear coat. Um, Old Masters wiping stain is what we're using right here. So it's this guy right here, and. Um, in regards to the clear coat, there's like a $130 one that's twice as much that makes wood kind of like plastic, but uh, we're trying to maintain some degree of a, of a budget around here, and uh, we just did not for that one in this case because of that. <laughs> um, so let's walk through the master. You can actually see Andre's kind of wiping this still on here. So right now, what are, what are we wiping on right now? We've got the conditioner. We have the conditioner or the clear coat or the stain or what? Okay, so we're putting the conditioner on right now, and this is the conditioner process. So it's kind of like you're conditioning your hair, but you're conditioning wood. And uh, again, it's just going to kind of absorb, it's going to help enable the stain to absorb more evenly. So that's the deal. So we'll hit it with conditioner, and then we will go ahead and follow up with the stain, get it to our liking in terms of color, and then from there we'll go on with a clear coat. All right, so walking down the master corridor here, uh, you've got a change in elevations with the hall, and you've got these big, uh, nice shelves. They look a little bit darker right now. Part of the reason is because these uh, are older, and they already had some stain on them before, which we, we removed some of. Also, we just applied the stain, so it's going to be a little bit darker because of that, too. So 
Uh, we all have shelves strategically placed in the areas that have lines. And so uh, we're just kind of taking all this in. You know, each, each piece of wood is going to receive stain a little bit differently. And we know that, and we just kind of have to anticipate that. So here we're in the laundry room, and we've got more stuff being stained. We've got a big, beautiful door right here. I love, absolutely love these doors. These are all white oak doors. And uh, so they kind of match the, the cabinets, though the cabinets are riffs on and the doors are not. Um, here's where we're going to have our brick, but this is a, a beautiful slider that we've been working on. And I'm not going to take it all the way. We will eventually have brick right here, and it's going to be a little bit different in the setup, but very cool. So this, again, some more of these wide open shelves. These, uh, like I said, are real old and came from our client's uh, father's classroom. Here's the master bedroom. We've got another one of these big, beautiful planter shelves. So you've got basically columns interacting. You've got this, this vertical column with this, with this beam, big bulky beam, and then we'll end up having brick come right over here to about this point, and we'll live and return to that window. So this whole wall will be brick. Um, you know, again, this is my first time to actually see all this wood stain. So it's a pretty monumental moment because like I've been thinking about all this stuff for quite a while and looking at the pop of the warmth in this wood is just really impressive. Really nice to look at. See we've got butt joints with all of our door jams that just worked out a lot better in this case. Uh, now we're going to master shower and in the shower we've got another one of the big planters. And this will be our tub. We've got shelves for the vanity cabinet right here. Check out the vanity cabinet. So this is an example of all that maple inside. And that maple is just clear coated. We'll be applying two coats of clear coat to it. Come check this out. So this is our system in terms of making sure that we know where everything goes back. And we're basically documenting the, uh, the doors, the cabinet drawers, and the hinge locations and uses of the hinges. Right here, uh, this is the toilet closet, or the water closet right here. Here is our master closet. We have our dehumidifier up top, which we've looked at in some other posts. Here's a big, beautiful door. I'm going to take a shot behind the door. Love the way this looks. And then we've got our cool, wide open, very minimalist um, shelving, which I wouldn't say it's like super modern or anything, it's just more minimal and uh, definitely does speak mid-century to me because of the warmth of the wood. I really like this this shelving unit here. It's just, I, I really love the simplicity of it and I think the offset of the warm wood from all the white looks nice. So we're coming out of like these doors all kind of meeting each other in an interesting way. So you've got a bunch of woodworking and it looks, it looks very groovy. Really beautiful. And I can give you a shot of the door. So with this sort of stain, it's an oil-based product, and uh, it does <laughs> it does off-gas. It isn't the best smelling stuff that you'll ever smell. But there's a certain kind of look that you get from an oil-based stain that I really like. I, I played around with some plant-based, oil-based stains, and they smell a little bit more like biodiesel or something, and they can be cool too. This Old Masters from Benjamin Moore, it's just a really nice, consistent product, and my painter likes using it a lot, and that's what we did our samples with originally, so I feel like if you can deal with the, the temporary off-gassing, that you can't go wrong with the finished product. It looks great. But if you are concerned about off-gassing, an alternate product that you could consider is an Osmo stain, which is out of Europe, and again, that's going to be in an almost entirely plant-based stain, and um, that's even a little bit nicer to deal with. So like in my house, when I made a cabinet uh, not too long ago, um, 
my daughter and I finished all of the, the cabinet with the Osmo oil, and that's because it was that plant-based version, and it wasn't a, a toxic version like this. So this uh, oil-based stuff will, will burn off rather quickly, so it's not like it's forever um, gnarly, but you know, why it's actually being applied, it's not the best thing to smell. It can give you a little bit of a headache if you're sensitive to that sort of thing, which I actually am. So here are the areas where we have yet to apply the stains. You can see the wood is much lighter. Uh, you get these big beefy areas where the wood has been joined with a domino. And then these really cool closets. So this is like our double pocket right here. Actually, that reminds me. Let's go look at the other pocket door. I was thinking about that last night. So this one right here is basically a double pocket that has a catch. So we have more wall right here for this pocket, and then we've got two doors. So we've got a wider wall set up, and you take the first door and it catches the second door. Yeah, pretty cool. And then come out of it. Bam. And you're back flushing. So that's all Johnson hardware stuff. And uh, we actually use the Johnson pockets in this case. And uh, after kind of utilizing those Johnson pockets and all the elements that go along with pockets, I think that I would just construct my own pockets in the future, but I, I like the hardware a lot. So that's that's pretty much a wrap with regards to the scheme. Uh, thanks for checking it out.